Hey everybody, it's me, the Dion Bigo, and we're back with more Hokuto no Ken. Today we are fighting Ray. It's actually just my real name, except it's spelled differently in here. But yeah, um, Ray is probably one of my favorite characters from the show. He is a guy who starts out as a little bit of a jerk, but he actually ends up becoming Kenshiro's friend. And they buddy around for most of the second major arc of the first show, of the first series. And he uh, really reforms himself. He, his character, okay, there's like six masters of uh, different styles of sort of the same martial art that he practices, and uh, he's one of them. He was born under the Star of Justice, destined to fight for justice and such like that. Uh, and, well, I mean, it doesn't start out like that, but he eventually does do that. His story is really neat, and kind of a tragic one. Because he finally gets all that he wants, and then he... Because he's... Because he became Kenshiro's friend... Dies a... Horrible death. But still, in the end, manages to make the most of it. Before he walks into a building. Bleeds out all at once. And then Kenshiro and company... Uh, set the house he was uh, he died in on fire, I, I guess as a memorial to him. It's a little weird, but yeah. So uh, Ray was kind of a badass, although his fighting method was really silly, because he he basically clawed at his enemies with his hands while going and stuff like, and sounds like that but he cut them into perfectly cubed like human chunks and it was it was pretty neat basically his whole fighting style revolved around leaping under the air and then uh, clawing at his enemies with graceful acrobatics I think his style was called Nanto Sweet Choken, which was uh, Water Fowl Fist of the of the South Star. So I guess you could say he he practiced the art of like the duck fist. <laughs> he had the power of duck fist, <laughs> even though he clawed at people like he was a cat. That's still really weird to me. Oh well, it's not a big deal. But yeah, uh, when I was doing my practice playthrough of this game, he actually gave me a fair amount of trouble. Both him and Mamiya before him were the most troublesome people near the beginning of the game for me. Oh, also, I made a mistake on my last video. I did say that all the characters that are in this game you would see as we fight our way through arcade mode. That is not true, because actually there's one character named Yuda, but spelled like Judah, except with an a without an H at the end, who is, uh... who is not someone Kenshiro ever fights in the show. He was actually Rei's greatest opponent. So that's why Kenshiro doesn't fight him in arcade mode. Here we have Kenshiro's brother, Jaggy. Or one of his adopted brothers, I guess. Jaggy is kind of an odd sort. He is more or less a trap and setup character in a game that's all about getting close and just high speed fighting. So he doesn't work out too well. As you can see, he keeps attaching a big stone block to my leg, though, which makes it so I can't jump and my movement, uh, my normal movement speed is very slow. Also, when you see me do that super attack where all those outlines of Kenshiro come into his person, 
Yeah, I'm using that attack wrong. I use it like a super mode where I just get all cocky and then just start rushing in and trying to beat him down. Which works most of the time, but not always. Uh, it's actually meant as a parry move. And you won't actually see it being used like that for a long time. Because I didn't know it did that until the last boss used it on me. Actually, I think I went over this in my last video. It's been a little while since I've recorded uh, commentary for this. Oh well. Uh, at any rate, Jaggy's not that uh, interesting of a character. About the only truly interesting thing about him in the show was he was probably one of the very few characters in the show that actually had a gun and working bullets for that gun. Which was the thing that was hilarious. Um, when uh, I did co-commentary on my pal Fist Lev's, uh Fists of the North Star for the Game Boy playthrough, it looked like Jaggy would just throw the bullets at you and because he's supposed to have a shotgun. Anyway, we come up to uh, the nicest of Kenshiro's adopted brothers, Toki, a man who tried to only use his powers to heal people but he was quite the formidable fighter in his own right, and actually in the show caused people to die in the most horrifying way possible as their limbs twisted around and their bodies broke, but they had big psychotic smiles on their faces because it, what he was doing was, I guess he was supposed to be making them die painlessly, or feel a sense of euphoria while their bodies twisted around and uh, they just got ripped apart. But it was terrifying as all hell to watch. <laughs> but yeah, he's... He was another tough opponent in my, uh... My... First run through of this. God, I just keep yawning. Um, I forget whether I beat him first try here. Uh, it may take me two tries. Actually, now that I think about it, I think it did take me two tries. I think in a competitive circuit, Toki's actually uh, said to be basically the top tier character in this game. People can do some pretty crazy things with him. I wouldn't know much about that, though, because I'm not that great at this game. But yeah, uh, you'll see that in the next video for sure, to be honest. So yeah, Toki fucking straight up murders me, apparently. God damn it, I wish I could stop yawning. I'm not even tired. You know what else I love about this show, though? Just <laughs> the really terrible motivations for why bad guys uh, develop vendettas against some of the good guys in this show. Like I was saying how Yuda was, uh, a guy named Yuda, was Rey's biggest adversary. That's because he was an arrogant, egotistical kind of prick who studied at the same school as Rey. One day he was admiring himself, and he went outside, and he saw Ray performing for some of the other students at the school they were at, and Ray leaped in the air and did an awesome attack, and for a second there, Yuda admired uh, the beauty of his movements, and then after that, realized that he had admired someone other than himself, and swore that he would kill Ray because of that. Fucking hilarious. But still, not as hilarious as uh, a guy who developed a, a hatred for Toki. It was a dude who looked sort of like Toki, except he had brown hair instead of white. And his name was Amoeba, but it was spelled like A M I B A. To decide the destiny. And 
he didn't know Hokuto Shinken, which is uh, ten Toki Jaggies and one of their one other brother's fighting style. But he tried to teach himself it, and he wanted to help people, I guess. So he walked into this town where Toki was staying and healing people, and he just started walking up to people, and the dude's like, oh, I've got a small ache in my leg, and Amoeba's like, hey, I'll take care of that. It's, I know how to do stuff. So he, because the entire point of the series is that uh, Kenshiro and his brothers, the way they fight is they poke pressure points on people to cause things to happen. They can either heal them or kill them or make them do weird shit. If you watch the show, you see all kinds of crazy shit happen. But, oh, I'll get back to that in one second. Shout out to my buddy Fistleb again. Check it out. Kenshiro versus Sauza. They actually did spell his name Thouther in this game. <laughs> that is the third different spelling of his name that I've seen in the Fist of North Star games I've played. <laughs> it's just weird. But whatever. And the game still calls him Sauza. So... Yeah, go figure that. But back to my story. So Amoeba started poking pressure points on people, and the, it only made the dude worse. He was like, "Ah, I'm in pain! He's like, oh, well, that didn't work. I am experimenting here, so let me try again. At which point, Toki walks over, goes, what are you doing? Let me help this man, and he lightly shoves Amoeba over, and he sort of, he's in a crouching position, and he just kind of falls to the ground a little bit, looks up at Toki, and swears blood vengeance upon him for uh, giving him such indignity, or making him face such an indignity. Battle two. Decide the death. But other than that, hey, this is a guy named Souser. He is a uh, a warlord, basically, who kidnaps and enslaves children to help him build a, uh, a a pyramid that you see in the background. Why does he enslave children? Because they don't fight back, or something like that. That's basically the way what he says in the anime. He's a real fucking heartless bastard. He's only heartless, though, because his mentor, uh, when he was learning the fighting style he knows, which is like Phoenix Godfist or something like that, he, uh, his, master's final test for him to become the successor successor of the style was to blindfold him and then the master would attack him and Souser would have to have to kill him to uh, become the successor which happened and then Souser took off his blindfold and realized that his master was the one he had killed and so Souser just basically shut himself off to all feelings like love and compassion and stuff and then just started being an enormous dick with his one singular goal being to build a gigantic pyramid in honor of his master. You see that little man in the background carrying up the uh, the top of the pyramid? His name is Shu. He was trying to rescue the kids, and he took on Sauza, and he lost. <laughs> so, uh, I think Sauza like, damaged his legs or something like that, or chained big heavy things to them. The time of retribution. And he made Shu carry that, destiny. uh, piece all the way to the top of his pyramid, where Souser then had his, uh, men throw spears and impale him, and then the top of the pyramid crushed poor Shu. That dude got a straight-up raw deal. 
also, uh, if you've noticed, yeah, well, yeah, that's his, that's one of his specials, too. He can make it fall on you. If you're in the air, you just take damage, but if you're on the ground, you'll actually stop and try to hold it above your head and then get nailed with a bunch of spears and have it fall down on you afterwards. Also, uh, in the show, Kenshiro couldn't defeat Souser at first because he couldn't hit any of his vital points, his pressure points, because Souser had dextrocardia, which, because his heart was on the wrong side, meant that all of his pressure points were reversed, I guess. So Kenshiro got the absolutely shit beat out of him the first time he fought him. Kinda like you're seeing me get now. But yeah. Yeah, but it, it was a pretty good fight when it all came down to it. And in the end, Kenshiro uh, gave Souser a much more dignified death than he probably deserved. <laughs> he showed him compassion by uh, striking him with an attack that would allow him to die without feeling pain. Which again, probably more than that asshole deserved. But it wasn't necessarily his fault that he became a bad guy. He just had some unfortunate shit happen to him. Of course, he fucking overreacted about it. Oh, here's his instant kill move. By the way, Souser's uh, fighting style has no actual stance to it. He just stands with his arms at his side. That's how he defends himself. Uh, when I played this game in the arcades, Souser was usually the character I played as, because he was the one easiest one for me to figure out without a, and a, being able to actually see a move list. He's also the one that I beat the Game Boy game with, but again, if you want to know more about that, you just check out uh, Fist Lev's playthrough of... Uh, this is the North Star for the Game Boy. It's not nearly as thrilling as this, but because there's two of us, the commentary is a lot better. Also, he's never actually seen the original Fist of the North Star series. Me and him watched through the entirety of the second series, which has no bearing on this Let's Play, because this Let's Play only co covers all the major fights from the first series. <sighs> ah, fucking Souser. I love how he waves his cape and he just instantly has a mask and a sword all of a sudden. <laughs> Here's the funny thing. So, okay, I'll just come out and say it. The big bad of the original series is uh, Kenshiro's last adopted brother. His name is Raul. He's a great big behemoth of a man, and more powerful than any of the other brothers. But uh, while Souser's being a dick, even Rao kind of rides up and is like, man, that is some fucking mean shit. I mean, I'm trying. I mean, yes, I'm trying to take over the wasteland, and I'm not too kind to most people, but I still believe in honor. I like how when uh, I also like when Kenshiro, whenever Kenshiro wins, <laughs> the kids run over. Ken! Ken's just like, did you see me murder a man? Witness this battle. Witness all of my battles. Watch me murder people who deserve it. Sorry, Souser, you combo me into that one, so it doesn't take this time. I 
yeah, I believe this is the time I actually beat him. It's getting that way. It's getting to look that way. And by getting to look that way, I mean I make an actual pretty good comeback here in a second. Or do I? <laughs> you know, maybe I really don't. Oh no, yeah, here it comes. Never mind. This gets close. Like, clenching your butt cheeks close. <laughs> he should have taken advantage of that and defeated me, but he didn't, and now he lost. Alright. I'm the DOM Big O, and I will see you next time for the long, hard road that is Rao. Goodbye.